I called the meeting of the San Juan Unified uh, School Board uh, 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 School Board of Education to order. There are two closed session items on tonight's agenda. Student expulsions in two cases based on Education Code Section 48918 sub F and personnel matters, public employee em appointment, employment superintendent, government code section 54957. Do we have any? Have, have none? We will now go to closed session. I call the meeting of the San Juan Unified School District Board of Education back to order. The meeting is being audio and video recorded and the recording may capture sounds and images of those attending this meeting. The recording will be posted on the district's website. Board meetings are being held in person in the boardroom at the district office and the public is welcome to attend. Alternatively, the meeting may be viewed on the district's YouTube channel where it is being live streamed. Please stand for the presentation of the colors by the Castle Robley Fundamental High School Air Force Junior ROTC. Form color guard. Ready. Ace. Present. Arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Arms. Ready. Ace. Forward, arch. Good evening and welcome. I am Michael McKibben, board president. To my right is Ms. Seema Creason, board, board vice president. To her right is Ms. Pam Costa, board clerk. And to her, her right is Mr. Saul Hernandez and Ms. Paula Viasquez, board members. To my left is Superintendent Kern, and to his left is Board Administrative Assistant, Stephanie Cunningham. Individuals who are attending the meeting uh, in person and would like to offer public comment, we ask that you complete the, the speaker request card available at the staff table and you will be called on at the appropriate time. And some of them will be in general comments and some of them will, will be when the item that, you, that you're talking about will be coming up. Please note that bylaw 9323 limits visitor comments to two minutes per speaker and no more than 30 minutes per single topic. Time will be extended for any speaker who uses an interpreter. Please be aware that the public comments, including your name, become part of the public record. We are now at item D1, approval of the minutes from September the 22nd. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes for September 22nd? So, so, so moved. Uh, Ms. Creason uh, and Second. seconded by Ms. Ms. Costa. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That was unanimous. We are now to item D2, approval of the minutes of September 27. 
Are there any corrections to those minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of September 22nd? So moved. Mr. Hernandez. 27th. Uh, did I say second that time too? 27th, thank you. So moved. Mr. Hernandez uh, moves and seconded by? Second. Seconded by Ms. Costa. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That too is unanimous. Okay. We, knew we now move to item E2, high school student council reports. Tonight, we hear from the student representatives from El Camino Fundamental High School and Casa Robla Fundamental High School. We start with El Camino and Nayali Reyes is first. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, President McKibben, members of the board, Superintendent Kern and Ms. Cunningham. My name is Nayeli Reyes and I'm the ASD president at El Camino Fundamental High School. I'm super excited to speak on behalf of my school today about what's been happening here at El Camino. Our student government class has been working hard on fundraising money for their classes and working hard on their homecoming floats with our overall theme being Greek mythology. The class has been working on preparing for our homecoming week, spirit week, rally, dance, and our floats. We get to show up our floats during our homecoming game on Friday, October 21st, with our homecoming dance following the next Saturday, October 22nd. Our famous haunted house is the following week with our Stranger Things theme. We decorate our small gym and invite surrounding middle school student government classes to experience our haunted house. Our entry fee is $1 or two canned food since we partner with the KCRA for the canned food drive. Our student government class is also taking on the role of putting on a dance at Ralph Richardson Center on December 16th. As for our drama class, we will be having our Bye Bye Birdie play opening on October 27th, and they will be having a total of six shows. Our choir is having an autumn-themed concert on Wednesday. They performed at Evening with the Stars just last week. Our band is having their first concert of the year this Friday. We will be hosting our annual New Ola dance. Band plans to perform at the rally and continue our homecoming traditions like banging on the lockers and playing in the hallways on the way to the rally. Two weeks ago, we hosted our annual alumni night and also had the arcade band join us in, the pe in playing pep band for the Vista Del Lago game. Our EPI program, which is a sophomore through senior program where students are developing skills to prepare for majors such as architecture, manufacturing, engineering, and more. Juniors just completed building props for the drama set. Sophomores are beginning to work on their solar cars to compete at CRC. We have a new medical assisting program, a junior and senior program uh, who's currently working on covering all medical assistant training before they go into their internships in January. On October 6th, they had CPR training all day to get their certifications. Every day they do something different, including training, notes, practicing vitals, and many procedures and presentations. They are working towards pre uh, preparation for their internships at individual clinics for their CTE exams in May. We have our very own media program, which is all about connecting the campus with the community through project-based learning. Our student-led student radio station, which can be listened to at KYDS 91.5 FM, is having our winter 24-hour audiothon on December 2nd. Our school newspaper gathers information and distributes it to students in surrounding communities and businesses. This year, they are doubling their amount of prints to 2,000. Our ceramics classes are currently working on glazing their coil pots, and our painting and drawing class is currently working on painting and drawing using oil pastels. The students, and, uh, the students and staff at El Camino have been doing well. We are full of eagle pride and spirit. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all today. I would love to answer any questions that bo the board may have and go Eagles. Thank you. Ellie, what any uh, questions or comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Hernandez. Thank you very much for for the presentation. I really enjoyed every aspect of it and all the um, engagement and all the activities happening. But one thing that really stood out to me from your report from, that was different from other reports that we've heard is how much interaction you all are having with other sites. And I just thought that was really neat. And I'm would love to hear a little bit more if you have more details, but really just wanted to commend you, both the Ra Ralph Richardson dance, um, a 
I'm not sure if that's happened before, if it has. Um, I, you know, it's been a long couple of years, so I just, I forgot about it, but that sounds great. And even having the Arden Band join for a football game, that's all just really great community building. And um, you don't see that a lot outside of the school site. So I welcome you to expand on either of those if you would like to, but mostly just wanted to say that um, it stood out to me and I really appreciated it. Thank you. Um, we do partner with a lot of different schools for different activities, including middle schools and other high schools. It's just something we've always done. Um, we've done our Ralph Richardson dance in the past, but not since I've been in high school. So it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Hernandez. I was just going to say the same thing. So thank you. Okay. Ms. Creason. Thank you for the report. You are very, very busy. You and the team over at El Camino. So a couple of things I pointed out. Haunted House. When was that? Um, that'll be October 28th. 28th. Is it after school? Um, it happens from second to fourth period. Oh, I have to go see that. You do. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that. Also really excited about the Ralph Richardson dance. Ralph Richardson is near and dear to my heart. So if you need volunteers at all or donations, I'm here for it. Would love to stop by and be helpful in some way. That's really, really wonderful. So thank you for doing that. Um, and excited about your play. So the last two plays I was able to attend and I saw two um, productions that I had never seen the movie or anything. So Mamma Mia, I never seen before, did not know what I was walking into, totally changed my life. And um, what was it? The last one was Oklahoma. And Again, it's like, okay. And my husband's from Oklahoma, but I wasn't super <laughs> excited about going. Again, changed my life. It was really, really great. And so I'm excited to come and see Bye Bye Birdie. I know you guys had some major um, changes to your main staff because folks are staffed. <laughs> uh, stu uh, cast. 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 Um, because some folks graduated. So I'm really excited to see the changes um, as we enter into the new production season. So thank you for your report. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about, you said uh, you're doing Bye Bye Birdie four times, uh, the 20... Yes. Sorry, a total of six shows. Total, total of six shows over three weekends, is that one? Um, I believe it starts the 26th, and I think we go into November 5th. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Nayeli. Uh, that, uh, thank you for your report. And indeed, now we'll move to uh, Casa, uh, Casa Robley Fundamental High School. And, and we have from Casa, uh, Kaylee and, and Dylan will be talking to us. Good evening, President McKibben. Members of the board, Superintendent Kern and Ms. Cunningham, I am Dylan Sacito, student body president and varsity football captain of Castro Robley High School. And hello, my name is Kaylee Gibbs. I am the senior class president at Castro Robley High School, as well as our rally commissioner. And we appreciate the opportunity to represent Castro Robley in this meeting, as we have some great things to share tonight. First and foremost, we have started the year considerably strong. Numbers are up in almost all clubs, CTEs, and student awards. Our student government class doubled in size and has been successful in holding five events, two rallies, and a spirit week so far this year. This year for us has been about growing our Ram pride across the campus. There are a ton of new faces and a ton of younger students have never seen Ram Nation in full effect. Homecoming week was an opportunity to show them and we did not fall short of expectations. Last Tuesday kicked off our New York City Spirit Week in style with Tacky Tourist Day and the debut of our backdrop posters. Our rally took place Friday morning and it was amazing. Led by my partner, the rally took piece, pieces from each corner of Castle Roble and smashed it into one 44 minute masterpiece. The band performed, a student rocked the national anthem on his guitar as the JROTC presented the flags, our cheerleaders put on a show, our homecoming nominees made an entrance, followed by the football team's Ramjacks, and it all ended in back-to-back -back winning rallies for the juniors. That night, Ram family came together at Newman Field for a 7 p.m. kickoff to our homecoming football game. We had a DJ fueling our neon construction-themed student section, and all four classes displayed a themed trailer float for our nominees at halftime. The football team won the extreme one with the extreme support provided by PAC stands, our band, cheerleaders, and the infamous Blue Crew. 
The next day, 800 Rams got to experience a cast of study of dance at our school for the first time since January of 2020. We had one gym for bag checks, snacks, drinks, and photo op, as the other served as our dance floor in New York City. <coughs> in sports all around, football is six and one with heavy playoff aspirations. Water polo is six and six with an opportunity to win a league title. And the girls volleyball has been very competitive in league play this year. Aside from that, both of our basketball teams are gearing up for senior led playoff runs this winter. Our senior class is also expected to produce around 10 college athletes that we will share with you later this spring. In regards to Casa Robles academics, we have additional exciting news. Ram Nation celebrated over 200 students for Renaissance and 453 of our Rams made honor roll for term four. Along with that, 80 students have opted to take the PSAT tomorrow morning. Our student body is continuing to invest into their academic careers as they prepare for midterms this week. Not only this, but students participated in, participating in AVID just explored colleges throughout Northern California. They were also given the opportunity to volunteer their time at the Crystal Rodriguez Memorial Golf Tournament, which presented interactions with investors of the scholarship fund and gave an extra push in their hopes for receiving a scholarship. Additionally, following the global pandemic, several programs have nearly doubled in size, including Junior ROTC, Auto, and FFA. Casa Robles Agricultural Program requested a special shout out for the arrival of some new furry friends. We as leaders of our student body are so proud to witness our peers engaged and thriving in pathways that fuel their interest and passion. Our SCORE program has recently been honored by being selected as a Lighthouse Academy, being a beacon to the, skate, to the state of California of a highly sophisticated CTE program. We are extremely proud of this program and its coordinator, Robert Biggs, and all of the valiant effort he has invested to make this program what it is today. Part of the CASA way is always extending support to our fellow Rams, and we are ecstatic for the opportunity to help other schools and programs across the state. Looking to the future, CASA Roble is excited to showcase our upcoming school vision statement. Student government has collaborated with the leadership of our, our administration, including our wonderful teachers and faculty, to create a statement worthy of representing every individual at CASA. We hope to justly represent the ambitions and hearts of our Ram family through this vision statement. Additionally, we are very honored to personally inform and invite you to Casa Robles upcoming spooky festivities. Saturday, October 22nd from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m., Casa is opening its doors to welcome the spooky spirit of October with a community-friendly evening of fun. The festivities will include a haunted house, trunk or treat, showcasing several clubs and groups at Casa, as well as some carnival inspired games. CASA is so grateful for the opportunity to connect with our community and Ram family through events such as this. This is not all for CASA Robles itinerary for the 2022 to 2023 school year. We strongly encourage and invite you all to enjoy the ride with Ram Country by following us through our social media platforms, as well as our weekly, annou weekly announcements with our wonderful Miss Baker. Thank you all again for the opportunity to represent CASA Robles tonight and we look forward to what's to come, not only for Casa Roble, but the San Juan School District. Take good care of yourself, be kind to each other, and go Rams. Any uh, questions or comments from, from board members? <laughs> Thank you both as well for the report, particularly excited to hear about the growth in enrollment and the seats in the different CTE programs, but more importantly than the numbers, just in general, everything that you all spoke with, you could just tell the pride in your voice. Uh, so that was really great to hear. So thank you for being fantastic ambassadors on behalf of your peers and for all of the work that you are doing. Um, it also sounds like there's quite a bit of student engagement in the school vision statement piece, which is fantastic. Um, I think more traditional statements that are created are a little bit more staff driven. So it's excited to hear that um, so hopefully what comes forward, I look forward to seeing the statement, but more importantly for me, the fact that student voice was part of it is, is really important. And then um, finally, I wanna thank you for the invitation, both of you to both um, the spooky spirit, but also the haunted house. I don't do haunted houses. So <laughs> I'm gonna let my colleagues take that one. But I hope it goes really well. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. So just wanted to say that. Don't don't take my absence as anything other than that. Thank you both for your great reports.
thank you very much for the comment. Um, we actually call it a haunted casa where, we're, where we come oh. from um, in Ram Country. So it's a little, <laughs> little bit different. Um, you know, definitely uh, would love you guys to make an appearance if you, if you could, um, if that was interesting to you. Um, another thing, uh, we appreciate, you know, the, um, you know, just acknowledging that we have so much pride in our school. Um, you know, we both take huge, huge steps this year um, as seniors to, you know, become better leaders on campus um, and involve ourselves in different aspects of the school, um, including student government and sports for both of us. So uh, we very, very much appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Creason. Thank you for the report. I love Haunted Casa. I, I will <laughs> go for my colleague because I like being very, very strict. So I will be there. Don't judge me for what you may see me do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I too, I just love that the student body is involved in the vision statement. That is huge. I mean, it is your campus. So I think that this could serve as a model, whatever your process, I'm not going to ask you to get into the process now. I would love to learn more about it, maybe offline, because that really could be a model for other schools. Um, I think it's so important. So we could all put, you, know, you all could put your stamp on your home school, right? Um, so that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, your sports successes. Wow. That's amazing. Um, got to ask, how are my, how are my goats in that big, giant, loud, stinky pig? Uh, they're doing well. Um, <laughs> they receive a ton of love from our ag program. Um, our, their leader, Ms. Tannehill, um, this is her first year being a hundred percent focused on just the ag program. So they're receiving a lot of extra love this year. I love that. Okay. Again, you know, if you ever need a volunteer, not, not with the pig, um, <laughs> yeah. but it kind of freaks me out a little bit, <laughs> but I do, I, I am concerned about his welfare and um, I love, love the goats. I don't know if you know, but my son has named two of your goats. One is named Max. He was a baby. Um, last time we were there, it was a while ago. And then there was another one that he named Great Dane, the golden goat. Um, so I would like to check on them very, very soon. So thank you for the invite and your very thorough report. Um, I think I think feeding hour actually comes up here soon after this. So if you'd like to say one more time, I said I think feeding hour for the pig actually comes up soon after this. So uh, you know that's all. <laughs> You're gonna have to handle that. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to, a couple of things. One is on the 22nd. Uh, what are the hours for that one? It's 5:30 to 8:30 p.m. It's in the okay. Got it. Okay. And the other one thing I wanted to comment was that uh, uh, as you talked about academics, it was very clear that you were talking about the whole uh, spectrum of college to career. And I think that's one of the things that CASA should be very proud of is that wide uh, spectrum. Uh, but uh, if you can tell me any more, you've, you've talked about the, the FFA program, you've talked about the uh, what was the auto program? You've talked about SCORE. Yes, sir. Uh, that uh, it is indeed uh, what CASA has become is this fully comprehensive school. Sir. You, you, so uh, we have the AVID program that we also spoke about. Um, we talked about an opportunity for a scholarship um, and kind of pushing that on our students. Um, you know, if they if they would like to go to college, then that's something that we definitely help them out with. Um, something that we're definitely very involved with. Um, the AVID program took a, a trip out to Northern California um, on the coastline um, for a AVID field trip. They checked out six different colleges um, in their three days they were there. And, you know, each one of them were able to learn a little bit about that college, also see a, a future home that could possibly end up at. Um, so, you know, we take huge pride in getting our students to the next level in academics and athletics um, on both sides of that spectrum. So thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Kylie. And, and uh, Dylan, it's Dylan, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I'll see you on Friday. Yes, sir. <laughs> see you on Friday. Okay. Thank you very much. We would like to thank, thank you for your report and appreciate you being here tonight. Student voice is very important to us. You are welcome to stay uh, uh, for the remainder of the meeting, but we realize that you both have, have all have very interesting lives, homework and things like that. Uh, it's okay, it really is okay to leave because, uh, because you're gonna be doing more interesting things. So if you need to attend to this, it is a good time to return to the other things that need your attention. And indeed, uh, Nayeli and, and the Casa, Casa Group, thank you very much.
We are at items E2 through E5. Uh, there are no reports from staff, board appointment, district committees, employee organizations, and other district organizations. We now move to item E6, closed session expulsion actions. Ms. Costa. The board voted unanimously to accept a hearing panel's recommendation of two expulsions in case numbers S2 and S6. The Board of Education took action in closed session to approve and ratify the superintendent employment contract for Melissa Bassanelli. The vote was unanimous. Pursuant to the government code, which requires a verbal summary of compensation and fringe benefits, Ms. Bassanelli's contract is effective January 1, 2023 through January 30th, 2026 and provides for a base compensation in the amount of $300,000 plus longevity at 8%. Ms. Bassanelli will receive a yearly contribution to a supplemental retirement plan in an amount equal to 25% of the maximum contribution permitted under the Internal Revenue Code Section 403B and will receive the same health and welfare benefits and salary adjustments as other district administrators. Thank you very much. We now move to item F, visitor comments. We have uh, 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 comments at this time and we will also have comments later uh, related to one of the specific items. I would like to remind the public that the comments are, are limited to two minutes. The clock on the screen counts down the time. Under the Ralph M. Brown Act, the board is not allowed to comment on items that are not on the agenda. So we are not ignoring your comments, we just can't respond to any individual comments. The superintendent can refer items to staff who uh, can follow up with you. Uh, Mr. Kern. Thank you, President McKibben. And if I do not get your names correct, which is very likely to happen, please correct it when you come to the, the podium. First up will be Brenda Genera, followed by Raheli Saru. So Brenda. Good evening. My name is Brenda Hanetta. I'm here to speak about my concerns of the security and safety of the students, our children, while they're in your hands. The ratio of students to teachers inside the classroom is roughly 22 to 1. For student safety, there is a handful of administrative staff and teachers that monitor and walk the campus daily when students are not in class. This alone is not enough. The ratio of students far outweighs the staff leaving opportunity for something terrible to happen. And it did to my family, my grandson. On September 20th, two former expelled students walked onto Mesa Verde campus, met up with two other students, and they waited for my grandson. When they found him, the first punch rendered him unconscious. As he laid on the ground, the four stood over him and stomped and kicked his head only. By the grace of God, um, Vice Pre Principal happened to be right there in the right place at the right time. Or else I don't know what would have happened to my grandson. Um, this one incident affected many of the students that day in various ways. Um, other fights broke out. Some students got physically and emotionally sick and other students who did not witness it had anxiety from being on lockdown and not knowing what was going on. As horrific as this could have been, it could have been so much worse. It scares me and also infuriates me and something needs to be done. I would like to know if the partnership with local law enforcement still exists and if this relationship is only after the fact. Why not have a relationship before the fact? What if this, these students had guns and they walked on campus? The only plan you have in place is locked in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Raheli Saru, followed by Jeffrey Perrine. Mr. President and board members, my name is Raheli. I'm also here uh, in regards to student safety. And in this uh, scenario, it's uh, again, Miri Loma High School. It also happened two weeks ago where my children and other children of color are, are being bullied by children from the Afghanistan. I feel like they're in their mindset, 
my student, my my children have been complaining about the bullying that they've been suffering, especially it started with hair pulling. And then when they would retaliate and fight back, students get um, suspended while the culprit gets away. Feels like that the school is ignoring this on the grounds that these children came from war torn country. My children are also immigrant. We also come here in search of better life. It looks like that the other party is having the mindset if they target children of colors and minorities, they are, will be in the good books of the majority of the, the, the white students in that school. So they are hitting out on black students. And there's another mother that will speak uh, after me today. The hair has been targeted because I think it is not only a matter of race, but also of faith of boys not allowed, not allowed to have um, long hair. So I'm here because I'm concerned that there's no necessary action taken by the school to protect the children of color. And I never dreamt that in search of a better life to be in this country is to stand before the school board and to protect my kids because of the, their skin color. I'm a mother that never defended them, always say walk away. But the school is telling us to build bridges. I am for building bridges, but not at the safety of my students and other students. It was a sad moment last week where the police were also involved and my children who were victims and the other mother's children, now they have a citation because of that. And I'd like the board to look into the building. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You. Jeffrey Perrine followed by Matilda Belarus. How are you doing today, board? I'm Jeffrey Perrine, running for District 5 School Board. I was just coming because I was taking a look at the curriculum and the things that were coming further on in the year. And I just wanted to make sure that we were, you know, on par and we we're going to continue to teach our kids and educate our kids and not indoctrinate. So I just more or less want to bring to the attention there's been a lot of things going on in the news nationally about teachers who are basically activists. And I see that we have a new superintendent coming in. Um, I know Mr. Kern, I know a lot of the parents had asked if we could wait until the new board was on before voting for the new superintendent. It didn't work out, so be it. But uh, a concern that I do have is that the superintendent did donate to Mrs. Velasquez and she's clearly on the left-hand side of uh, the voting board. So what my concern is, is that we're gonna have a superintendent come in who's going to be okay with left-wing activists and forcing kids to wear masks and that type of stuff. So. Um, I'm just hoping that the curriculum doesn't take a hard left turn and become even worse than it is now, uh, considering that our graduation rates are so low and our literacy and math rates are continuing to drop. Um, I'm also seeing the 4.5% increase in <laughs> your guys' pay, the teachers, not you guys on the board, but I'm just having a real hard time. So I just wanted to voice my frustration. I wanted to let everybody know that I'm running because I want to make a change, but um, I also just, I'm fed up. So I heard another parent talking about safety. It's a huge concern for mine. I think it'd be a great idea to get school safety resource officers on the on the grounds to help kids out. That way, when that type of stuff's going on, there's someone there to respond. Um, doesn't necessarily need to go to the point of where someone's being beat and stomped in the front because there's no teachers that are willing to step up. We really do need to protect these kids. I've been screaming about safety. Kids are not going to be able to learn if they don't feel safe at school. That goes for everybody. So safety at schools is hugely important. And as a parent, I wanted to tell you guys that. So thank you very much for your time. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Matilda Birus followed by Sarissa Brown. I speak more Spanish. Uh, I hope somebody help me translating. Pardon, pardon me. Can you tell the translation? Can somebody help me translating? Do you need an interpreter for Spanish? I'll translate for you. Mr. Hernandez will translate. Would you like me to do it there or you want me to do it from here? Uh, nada más estoy it. un poco. Para allí o quieres que hable aquí? Donde sea, está bien. Sí. Sí. <coughs> Estoy un poquito también para por la seguridad de la escuela. Very concerned about the safety of the schools. 
mi hijo fue atacado. My son was attacked. Y fue uh, más, usaron más de la fuerza a la policía. They used strong force uh, of the police. The police used force, sorry. Lo atacaron por ninguna razón. Jamás quiero un poquito más de seguridad en la escuela. He was attacked for no reason. I'm, I'm hoping for more safety in the schools. Y también el security deben de pueden agarrar a los estudiantes pasan sobre la autorización. Los golpean. Golpeó a mi hijo en security. ¿Es la palabra? El seguro. No, también de los Afganistán atacaron a mi hijo. They attacked some Afghanistan students as well as my son. Lo golpearon ellos y lo golpeó la policía. Usaron más fuerzas que no tenían que usar. La policía. Sí. The, the, the police used force, which they didn't need to use. Y el principal aceptó eso. The principal accepted that. Que ellos tomaron más de lo que no tenían. And they, that they used more force than which they didn't have to use. Tuve que llevar a mis hijos a los doctor. I had to take my children to the doctor. Estaban lastimados. They were hurt. Y están emocionalmente todavía. And they're emotionally affected. Tengo videos de donde está mi hijo, donde la policía lo atacó, lo I agarró con mucha fuerza y los estudiantes lo golpearon. I have video showing the police using force as well as the students hitting him. Excuse me, as I don't feel very good right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Sarissa Brown, followed by Dr. Temu Green. Hello, my name is Tressa Brown. I'm a, I have two students and I have two former students that graduated. I have a 15 year old at Mesa Verde. This is about my third grader at uh, Mariposa Elementary. And I think this leads up to a lot of concerns for high school. I was denied the opportunity to attend my daughter's assembly and watch her performance. My daughter entered kindergarten when COVID hit. So my daughter never had in-person learning because she did distance learning from kindergarten to second grade. Her first year in school, she was I was denied her very first performance. The justification for her PBIS performance was because of COVID. I didn't have um, fingerprinted. And then because PBIS is private information, not entitled to parents. So my concern is, especially watching the high schools, I noticed that the policies that the board comes up with is not transferred from the principal or the teachers or the people that deal with policies are not given to the parents correctly nor enforced correctly. And so I would like to have you guys review how your uh, personnel, like your teachers, um, principals, counselors, how they're informed and how they apply the policy. And then also uh, make sure it's up to date because she did qu the quote policies, but they were um, expired. They weren't valid. So um, how I see that impacting our children is that denying a parent participation in the education system. If you look at your own personal board policies multiple times, I see that you guys encourage parent participation. And when you deny that, then it, it creates a wall and parents can't have that communication to work with the school. We now, see, especially in the, where I live, I live in low income housing. So there's this um, motto that it's schools are considered prison to, or pipeline to prison. We don't see schools as a source of education, nor do we see it as a positive aspect in our, or our children's lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Temu Green. Hi, good evening. This is my first time being at a San Juan Unified School District board meeting. And I'm here like a number of other parents because I'm concerned about the tensions and the violence. I have a son who is a sophomore at Mariloma High School 
and uh, there has been a lot of tension in recent weeks, particularly between the Afghan students and the Black students. And I'm really here, and I've seen it spill over into the neighborhoods and the communities as well. So I live in Bohemian Park. There was a child who was beaten as a result of this conflict where the police had to come out. I know that there have been other incidents that have been pretty horrific that have happened. I know of several incidents actually at parks on the street where this violence has um, really escalated. And that's my concern is that I want to see the school board really support the sites in their prevention efforts and bringing down the tension and the violence that's going on. And if that's a matter of putting more resources in, if it's a matter of partnering with community-based organizations, but I feel like what needs to happen is a lot of healing on the ground between these groups before this further escalates. I'm not in favor of more law enforcement in the schools. Uh, my understanding around the research in that regard is that is particularly not helpful for students of color, that they tend to be more harmed by that than helped by that. Um, but I am really in favor of supporting the efforts of the administrators, the staff, the faculty uh, on, the, uh, on the sites themselves um, and any work that can be done in order to bring the groups together to promote healing and again, to bring in community-based organizations and other resources in the community so that we can get ahead of this before it continues to escalate. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. We now move to uh, item G, consent calendar. Do any members wish to remove any items from the consent calendar? Seeing none, is there a motion uh, to approve items G1 through G9? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Creason, seconded by Mr. Hernandez. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that too is unanimous. Thank you very much. We now move to item H. I'm sorry, we now move to item I, uh, the uh, business items uh, of the evening. The first one is independent study, uh, homeschool update. Uh, Ms. Townsend or Snyder. Uh, You're good. Can we get the mic? Peter, can we get the mic? Thank you. Good evening, Board President McKibben, members of the board, Superintendent Kern and Ms. Cunningham. Tonight, we are here to share with you an update on our independent study and our homeschool programs. You will hear a little about some changes to legislation that have occurred this year. You will hear about enrollment and a look at it over the years as we've progressed with these programs. You will also hear and see a glimpse into the day of our independent study and homeschool kids. We wanna thank you all for supporting these programs. They have provided our kids a really unique opportunity to learn in different ways. And so thank you for your continued support. Joining me tonight is a team of fantastic teachers. Tima Burgess is with us as well as Julie Segarra, alongside Holly Sabolski, Director of Elementary Education, and Brett Wolf, Director of College and Career Readiness. I would like to invite Brett Wolf to the podium to speak next. Well, good evening. As you may remember last year, California state legislation required that districts offer a TK-12 independent study option for families due to COVID. Some of the requirements of the program included requiring synchronous instruction with your teacher, daily live interactions from the school staff, and office hours. It also required us to develop and utilize a tiered re-engagement process to ensure students are participating in school and making adequate growth in their state standards. Another key point of the legislation required that we exit students from the program within five days of a parent request and transfer back to their traditional school enrollment, as well as keeping student to teaching ratios equivalent to what was offered in person. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Holly Sobolski, who's going to talk to you about the um, some more in independent study requirements for 22-23. Thank you. 
Good evening. This year, the legislation has been updated. For the most part, the key pieces that Mr. Wolf just shared remain in place while adding a few updates. Each family that is enrolled in one of our independent study or homeschool programs have a master agreement that outlines our program, the responsibilities of the staff and students, and what families can expect. Last year, the legislation was a bit lenient with the timelines and allowed for 30 days for that master agreement to be signed after enrollment. With current updates, the master agreement must be signed before the student may start in the program. This year, the tiered re-engagement outlines that if a student misses 20% of the required minimum instruction time over four weeks or 50% of synchronous time in four weeks, or is in general violation of the master agreement, we must have a meeting with the family to discuss what the barriers are and how we can support the student in meeting their academic growth. If improvements aren't made, we're required to send the student back to their traditional school of enrollment. And as a point of reference, last year was three days in a week or 60% of instructional time. For our students with disabilities, placement into the independent study programs must be an IEP team decision. It must be documented in the IEP team, specifying that parents are requesting independent study. And the team must determine together if free and appropriate public education can be met in the independent study setting. Students can't be excluded from the programs due to their ability to work independently, the need for adult support, the need for special ed, or any related services. This year in our TK-5 independent study program, enrollment is down from last year. Most of our families have chosen to return to their traditional schools of enrollment. The families that have chosen to stay with us have chosen this path for many reasons, but the majority of the families have either found that independent study works better for their students or because they may have medically fragile family members at home and independent study really does provide some ease of mind. All of our classes are enrolled to the same enrollment standards as one would find in an in-person classroom in our district. This year, our class configurations are one TKK combo, a first and second grade combo, a third and fourth grade combo, and then we have one straight fifth grade. We've had 17 students work through our waitlist process. Seven have been enrolled, five have elected to stay in person, and five are waiting. When our classes are full, we do have this waitlist that we actively monitor and we utilize to enroll students into our program. While students are on the waitlist, they're expected to be attending their traditional school of enrollment until a spot is opened up. If the waitlist reaches 17 students, that will trigger a conversation with human resources and enrollment to determine if more staffing is required and is available. We found that the amount of time a student spends on the waitlist really depends on the time of year and the demand for the program. We were able to accommodate all families that chose to stay enrolled at the end of the last year, and all of the students that have been through the waitlist process did start at their home schools and have chosen to come back into program. For our TK-8 homeschool program, you can see the huge COVID spike in enrollment here and how it's definitely eased up some last year and this year, although we are still about double what we had pre-COVID. We currently have five teachers in this program. We have two lead teachers, three general education teachers, and one special education teacher. In contrast to independent study, our homeschool teachers do teach all grade levels and work with all students in a family for as long as they're with us in this program. For homeschool altogether, we've had 16 students work through the waitlist process. 11 have been enrolled, two are waiting on some IEP amendments, and three are actively waiting. Same procedures for this program as we do for independent study. We actively monitor and we're ensuring that we're communicating with families as we're working through the waitlist process. We're really pleased that as a district, we can still offer these programs to our families that are choosing to engage this way. As you can see from the slide, we currently have 186 students enrolled in independent study in grades six through 12th grade, which is down from last year, but still up slightly more than we were pre-pandemic, which is also a similar pattern to the homeschool program. New in the 21-22 school year, we added a middle school component to the independent study portfolio to meet the needs of students who wanted to stay enrolled in San Juan schools, but didn't want to attend in person. Students at the middle school level are provided with 100% remote curriculum using the APEX curriculum. 
Students in grades 9-12 have the option of meeting with their teacher in person, working entirely remotely, or meeting with content area specialists in math, Spanish, and science. One of the things we're very proud of is that we're able to provide for individual needs of students who have needs that cannot be met at a comprehensive site. In speaking with some of our independent study teachers, it has become very clear that the independent study model offers an inclusive environment which needs individual needs of the student and allows them to experience success, sometimes for the first time. At Meraki, as you recall from last year, we successfully piloted an eighth grade cohort of students that we continued this school year. Students at Meraki, although it's an independent study model for attendance purposes, attend school daily, reporting to their advisor before working with the rest of the staff based on their individual plan of study that is aligned to their passions and goals. As I mentioned, El Serena High School students have daily access to teachers in the math lab, a Spanish teacher, and a science teacher, in addition to their supervising teacher. We have made sure students in the independent study programs, talking about El Serena Meraki, can participate in athletics at their home school. At El Serena Middle School in grades six through eight, in addition to what I already mentioned, we piloted a teacher on special assignment position last year to work with students outside of the traditional school day as a result of one of our key learnings. And that was many independent students do not work during the regular eight to three school day. Meraki High School is 100% in person. There continues to be an active parent community who assists with projects around the school, which as we know is not typical in a traditional high school. One of the great things that has emerged over the past several years, almost all students are involved in at least one curricular activity. And at this time, I'd like to give you um, the opportunity to, to, to listen to Ms. Tima Burgess, who is that teacher on special assignment for the 6A independent study. Hello. Um, as a teacher on special assignment for independent study, I provide direct support to students, parents, and teachers. Last year, our team of veteran teachers worked collaboratively to build a new independent study program for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. During the school day, I'm available to students and families while teachers give their undivided attention to students in their mandated individual meetings. In this new program, we continue to respond to the needs of our students and families by working collaboratively and individually. As a TOSA, I assist with interventions and create additional support materials like how-to videos. I also help to share the load with the teachers during times like state mandated testing, uh, back to school night and orientation. Since new students transfer to our program almost weekly, I assist one of our teachers during in-person orientations for our new students and families. We explain our program, our expectations, ensure, the ensure that students have access to technology so they check out their Chromebooks and make sure they can get on Zoom and that they can get into Google Classroom and they know where to find their resources. Um, as well as uh, present them with an introduction to the learning platforms. The onboarding of new students, however, can require several additional hours of Zoom meetings in the first few weeks. When a teacher gets new students, I provide coverage during their testing sessions to create space in the teacher's schedule so they can meet with their new students. While most of our instruction is delivered through the APEX platform, APEX does not have a sixth grade history course. So last year we developed asynchronous lessons for this course that are delivered through Google Classroom. Additionally, our students often need extra scaffolding and remediation to better understand their lessons. Our team finds and creates resources for students to use on their own or in tutoring sessions. Since many of the families in independent study are in need of schedule flexibility, my workday extends into the evening hours. This twilight support includes last minute tutoring Zooms, evaluating additional study assignments submitted by students seeking APEX quiz resets, unlocking test requests by parents for at-home proctoring, as well as providing basic technical support. Another feature of our program is this, that we added this year is four hours of drop-in tutoring available throughout the day. So students can come to their teacher or any of the teachers in our program, including me, to get assistance in their classes. We have some kids that come in 
and stay the whole time. They log into every hour and they're just there doing their work so they can ask for help when they need it. Um, and so that they can be right there so they don't have another step to do while they're working. Um, other students come to us as they need it and some students don't need the tutoring. They're able to um, work through the materials on their own and their weekly meeting with their teacher is sufficient. In addition to working at the middle school, the, last year I had the opportunity to work with the counselor at El Sereno to provide financial aid workshops, college application workshops, as well as eighth grade registration night for El Cerrito High School. Independent study middle school provides an education that students might have difficulty accessing in person. Although this program started because of COVID-19, we are finding that there are a plethora of other reasons families choose independent study. In our program, we have elite student athletes, students with special needs, students with transportation problems, and some students who were getting in trouble at their in-person school. Um, we also have students that have struggled socially, that have dealt with various problems. At independent study um, and middle school, we make a difference in the lives of our children. With such amazing progress, we hope that middle school independent study will become a permanent alternative education option. At the elementary level, we have some really exciting program highlights to share this year. Having experienced and established staff in both the homeschool and independent study programs has really made for a smooth start for our students and families. Both programs also offer students a daily inter opportunity to interact with their teachers and classmates in asynchronous lesson format. This is usually done over Zoom, but it does occasionally occur in a park or on a field trip. Last year, we were able to add a full-time secretary to support both programs, as well as a part-time administrator to support the two programs. I think one of the most exciting pieces we've been able to add based off of family feedback is a dedicated office space to house all our program materials, provide a place for families to meet with teachers, they can talk with the secretary, and they can drop off or pick up their work samples or materials. We were also able to send teachers to an independent study specific professional development this summer to support student learning in creative new ways. And now I'm really excited to introduce to you Julie Sagara, a fifth grade teacher in the TK5 independent study program to share some highlights of a student's day. Hi. In our TK5 independent study program, teachers are implementing everything that we've learned the past two and a half years to provide a program where students can thrive while they're at home. All students have a scheduled Zoom time with their teacher and classmates every day. Zoom time is spent building community and engaging in creative lessons around the California state standards along with board adopted curriculum um, and research-based best practices for working in an online format. Strategies learned at an Edu Protocols conference this summer keep students actively engaged and actually excited to research and write. What? <laughs> I have fifth graders. <laughs> they love seeing their scores turn from red to green at the end of a lesson and strive to beat their previous records. After our daily whole class Zoom, students work on meaningful asynchronous assignments in Google Classroom that support the synchronous learning and allow them to work on individual progress toward meeting their goals. There it is. We know students can get Zoom fatigue and need time away from their computers. So we purposefully plan lessons that take them away from their screens. Students may later meet on Zoom in smaller, more fluid groups based on individual student need. For example, there may be a math group to reteach or front load a lesson based on what happened in the whole group Zoom or a book club to discuss what we are reading. All students and families also have an opportunity to meet with their teacher during office hours if they have any questions, need help with a concept or assignment, or just want to say hi. There are a handful of students that really appreciate the dedicated time and come to office hours every single day. If students are ever absent from Zoom, they get a call from their teacher to let them know that they're missed and that we're here for them if they need help on any of the day's assignments. We may create video tutorials of what the students missed and email it to parents to keep them updated if needed. 
My colleagues and I are all grateful that independent studies allows us to create community with our students, inspire them to own their education through set it, setting and monitoring goals, and meet with them individually to tease out their strengths and support their families in ways that are outside of the norm. Many of my students have realized that engaging in their education on Zoom is easier for them and they need the flexibility that independent studies provides. Frequently, one of my students will post in the stream of our Google Classroom asking for me to please let him into the Zoom so we can talk before class. <laughs> Assuming that he needs something or has a question, of course, I let him in, and he just wants to know how I'm doing and what we'll be doing for the day. It's rewarding to see students so excited to come to Zoom and be prepared to learn from and with each other. When students post questions about assignments or where to find something or how to do something, nine times out of 10, before I get there to answer, another student has already responded with guidance and support. Independent studies isn't for everyone, but it is working really well for my class of fifth graders, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be their teacher. Okay, so our TK-8 homeschool program began six years ago with one teacher and a passion for homeschooling. The program really operates as an independent study program with a homeschool twist. Parents are the main teachers for the students, and each family is assigned an advisory teacher to provide support for the family as they learn together. We're excited to offer a new support class option for our middle school students that are struggling in ELA or math. We'll be collecting data on how students are doing in this new support, as well as talking with families and students to ensure it's meeting their needs. Homeschool is a really unique way to educate students and it takes a lot of dedication on the part of the family. Each day is different for the students and no two students in homeschool have the same experience. A day usually includes some of the traditional subject matter as well as some experience, some special experiences if families choose. Some families travel to national parks, they go to museums, or they experience science and nature. Some families also choose to utilize various vendors offering experiences such as piano lessons, art lessons, karate, and gymnastics, among others. We have current and up-to-date information on all of our independent study programs on the San Juan website for families to learn more. We also send out a survey to all families in the spring to project enrollment interest in our programs, as well as, as, well as having information in the new Facemobile as well as San Juan Central for families to learn more. We do have wait lists for both elementary programs at this time, but are actively monitoring them daily. If spots open up, we move to enroll students as quickly as possible. While students are on the wait list, they continue to attend their school of enrollment while they wait. Hearing the voices of our families and students is vitally important to us. And so each year we participate in the district-wide survey for parents, students, and staff in order to get feedback on the programs and make program improvements based on that feedback. Thank you so much for your time this evening. And should you have any questions, we have the whole team here to answer any questions you might have. Questions, um, Ms. Costa. Once again, well, to the whole team, just an amazing job. And once again, San Juan meets the individual needs of students and families. And I really want to celebrate that. Uh, Tima and Julia, you really made the programs come alive for me. Thank you so much for adding your experiences and adding to our understanding to the programs. My one question is, how do the independent high school programs remove barriers for our students so they can better access the learning and educational opportunities available to them? So I, I think when, when we think about removing barriers, I think what we have to think about is the fact that we have basically an opportunity for any high school student to find something that meets their individual needs. So if, for example, if a student has maybe some social emotional issues and being at a comprehensive site, 
is a barrier, then we can provide you know the different options in independent study, whether it's a, a hybrid model where they do something online, some of it in person, entirely online, or they can also just come you know meet with the, you know smaller groups, but not actually interacting you know just with the hustle bustle of a comprehensive campus. Um, you know we have the specialists uh, at the independent study program, so if they need support and math beyond what just the, their their regular teacher can do um they have that so I, I think it's really i think when we talk about removing barriers it's really just you know finding out what each individual student needs and then to providing that for them thank you mr hernandez thank you for the report i i'm i'm very impressed especially with the the opportunity or the flexibility as Ms. Burgess mentioned, to be able to reach out to our students and our parents. That, that, that's impressive to me that we would do that. And my only question is, is that I know that you said that the, the, the parents have the one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. Is that also available via Zoom or do they have to come in to meet with their teacher? Um, for the middle school program, um, students and parents meet with their teacher on Zoom. Oh, so they the do. only time they come in person is for orientation or if they have problems with their Chromebook. Otherwise, it's all <laughs> done online, all on Zoom um, and or on the phone. Okay, thank you. Can I speak to the elementary side of that too? Um, we also interact with parents through text, <laughs> through phone calls, through Zoom. I'll meet them at a park or at a Starbucks if necessary. I went to a, a one of the moms um, works at Starbucks and I met her at her, her job to trade out a Chromebook today. So like we're working outside of the bubble, you know, trying to remove the barriers for, for families that can't, it's for whatever reason. Impressive. You know? Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for the report. Um, during distance learning, I said many, many times that this is working for some kids and we do need to continue it. So I am with Ms. Burgess when you say, I hope we can continue it because I agree it's not for everybody, but for the kids that it does work for, it's changing lives. And that's a big deal. Um, what, one of the things, and you spoke about this, one thing that is important to me is ensuring that kids that are doing either homeschool or distance learning, that they do have access to physical activity or, you know, social events, like that they could go and engage in sports or go to a dance or whatever it may be. And I know that we embed that. And so um, thank you for calling that out. And I hope that we continue that because that's so important. Should they want to engage that they have an option to engage? Um, I wish, and I understand it's an HR issue and I'm not going to pretend to understand all the HR protocols, but I will, I would love to do away with the wait list. Um, I know it's hard to build a class for two kids. I get that, you know, but I worry that these are the things that lead to our declining enrollment. You know, if kids can't, families can't find what they want here with us, they're going to go find it somewhere else. Um, and I know we can do it better. <laughs> so I would, I would like to keep it. And again, I understand it's an HR issue, but I wish there was something we can do. So anyone who wants it can have it. Um, and I also wanted to say, I really appreciate that we're calling in, you know, if we don't see a kid on Zoom, that there's the phone call happening. Because who knows? It's different when you don't see a kid every day, right? You could check in, you know, the temperature, if there's something going on. Um, there's a lot that could happen with that interfacing and interaction. And when they're just not there, I could see that some of that could be lost. So I'm really glad that we're taking the time just to have that phone call. And it sounds like the call's happening with the kid, not just the parent. Did I understand that correctly? Both. Yeah, I think that's so important because sometimes I, I know, you know, with school site visits, you hear stories, you know, and the opportunity for a child to talk to another adult is really important growing up for a variety, even if, you know, parents not doing something wrong, you know, I mean, my own kid, you know, I, I'm sure I do things wrong, but he, I know he really values talking to another adult that is not his mama. And um, I, I think every kid needs that. So thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate your report. I had a couple of questions. I want to pick up on the, the wait list uh, uh, question. Um, wait list appears to me to be good news and bad news uh, in that one, uh, the good news is if you have a wait list, it's a popular program. Uh, bad news is there's a wait list. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, you mentioned they go back to uh, their uh, uh, neighborhood school and so forth uh, during the time. Um, do you stay connected with these people while they're on the wait list? Uh, do they get any of the kinds of special services that you were you were talking about while while they're uh, off the wait list? And, and generally, how long does it take them to get off the wait list? 
Sure, that's a great question. Um, when they're on the wait list, they do stay enrolled in their traditional school of enrollment, wherever that may be. And so they're fully enrolled in that program and they are not in the homeschool independent study program yet. Um, our secretary is really great at staying in communication with the families and she really um, does a nice job reaching out and letting them know where they are and where the movement is so that they are always very up to date on what's happening and um, where we are in the process. Um, as far as how long, it really varies, um, but for the most part, it tends to be a few days to a few weeks. It really just depends sometimes for our students with disabilities. It takes a little bit longer to get through the IEP process. It just really depends on the circumstances, but we really do try to move it as quickly as we can because we know that families are really wanting to come in. So we try to facilitate it as quickly as we can. Very awesome. The, the second question I had was about Meraki. Now, I really like Meraki. I always have. I had great hopes for it. And, and frankly, it looks like the, the numbers haven't worked out quite at the, the growth rate that we were hoping about. One of the things that I used to do is work with schools all around. And what I call, and I think the general title, necessary small schools, have always struggled for viability when they are at the numbers that they are now. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that in terms of why you think the numbers haven't increased as, as we projected in when we uh, were approving that and, and hoping about this, because I, I see those students and they're amazing. The kinds of facilities you have are amazing. I've been impressed with the teachers, but still running a school of this size is problematic from a viability point of view and from a board member trying to be careful stewards with taxpayer money. Uh, I know what small schools cost. Help me understand why I should be hopeful. Well, I, th I think when, when we look at Meraki, I think we need to realize that we're, again, meeting the needs of, of a, a certain segment of students who otherwise we wouldn't be able to serve. They're, they're not students that would be successful at a comprehensive high school. They're not independent study students either. They're students that really basically been disengaged to come some, you know, some, maybe an alternative program like a Montessori program. So they're, they're looking for something just a little bit different than, than what we've had traditionally. And so and I know that you've all been there, so you've seen how it works. Um, so we're still meeting the needs. And so, you know, we've done things like, you know, starting the eighth grade cohort. And so that's something that um, is, is proven to be beneficial, trying to recruit students from other places um, before they, you know, maybe engage in another program. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I can guess, you know, I think we, we had some momentum and then going into COVID, if you look at the numbers, I think that kind of impacted things. Um, and so it's recapturing those students again. Um, we have a new principal, Mr. Bebo. I know he's been very um, outgoing. His wife is actually a teacher there. And so um, I, th I think we're going to continue to see recruitment efforts. And so, you know, with, with their CTE program, they've got a, um, a really innovative, um, basically all things arts, media, and entertainment. You know, they make movies, they do video, music, and all kinds of things. So they're recruiting students with that. Um, but really, it's more of a word of mouth program because, you know, they've gone out to the different, you know, potential feeder programs and they're able to get so many students. Maybe we we maybe we hit our peak. You know, since we started, we added another teacher. So we had the four teachers originally. We added a fifth and then also we brought Scott Evans in. So really, we started with four. Now we're up to six. So we have grown. And I don't know. I mean, it, it could be the fact that we peaked um, and maybe there still is opportunity for growth. I, I don't know that answer. I, I see see that you had added eighth grade as as one one of the things that you had done, right, and so forth. But uh, so, how do people find out about Meraki? Well, like I said, so they they're they're going to be at the CTE Expo that we're going to have in November. So that's an opportunity to recruit students. Um, they go to the middle schools uh, trying to recruit students. Um, then they go to all the different programs, like you know, and I'm not sure all of them. But I know some of the Montessori or some of the more, yeah. you know, not public schools, but just alternative um, styles of learning, trying to recruit those students. Because a lot of times when those students, they leave 
elementary, middle school, they don't really have a place to go. And so that's been some of the target um, as well as to, to, to look for future students. Okay, thank you. There's gotta be a place for this. Okay. Um, unless there's anything further, we will move on to I2. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting. I2 is the resolution 4041 declaring the uh, importance of secure firearm storage and associated preventive me measures. Good evening, President McKibben, members of the board, Superintendent Kern and Mrs. Cunningham. I am pleased to present for your consideration resolution 4041 declaring the importance of secure firearm storage and associated preventive measures. The resolution commits the district to communicating the importance of firearm storage to district families beginning this school year and continuing in future school years in alignment with recently passed state legislation. This is an action item. I believe we have several community members here to offer a public comment and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. That we do this. We need to do visitor comment. Yeah. We are gonna do visitor comment first and Mr. Kern will call you up in the order that you are on our list. And a reminder with two minutes, first is Sarah Dudley followed by Jane Lamborn. Hello, my name is Sarah Dudley. I'm, I have a child in this school district and I spoke here a couple of weeks ago and I'm just so pleased in support of this, you know, bring, bring this resolution to you. And I am just so pleased that the board has acted, that the district has acted so quickly to bring this to you. Uh, we encourage you to vote in favor and thank you once again for your consideration and for showing, uh, showing leadership in this area where leadership is very important. Thank you. Jane Lamborn, followed by Suzanne Lander. Good evening, members of, of the board, Superintendent Kern and Ms. Cunningham. I'm pleased to be here tonight. I'm here to urge you to adopt Resolution 4041. I um, moved to Carmichael many years ago. I chose it primarily for the school system, San Juan School District. My three children attended those schools, kindergarten through high school, many different schools. I so appreciated the support they were given by the schools and the students. I'm here tonight to ask you to adopt this resolution 4041 because it will provide education on secure gun storage to parents and guardians. This education is going to protect kids. It's going to help prevent gun violence. It's going to protect our communities. This is something proactive that the schools can do that will help our kids and our community and keep them safe. I urge you to adopt it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Suzanne Lander followed by Ashley Freer. Maybe remind them that we can't comment. Good evening, Superintendent Kern and the San Juan Unified School District Board members. My name is Suzanne Lander, and I am a concerned parent as well as a volunteer with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, which is a part of the Every Town for Gun Safety. I want to thank you for hearing our statements in September and for promptly adding the Secure Firearm Storage Resolution 4041 to the agenda. By voting yes on this resolution tonight, you are showing the parents and the community of the San Juan School District that you value the safety of the children in your schools. We would like to continue to partner with the San Juan Unified School District after the resolution has been passed through sh our sharing of the Be Smart campaign, which is a program designed to help parents and adults normalize conversations about gun safety and learn about actions that we can take that can prevent child gun deaths, injuries, youth suicides and gunfire on school grounds. Thank you again, and please vote yes on this resolution to make our school district a safe place. And lastly, Ashley Freer. Good evening, board, um, Mr. Kern, Mr. Allen, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Thank you um, for getting this on the agenda. We really appreciate on behalf of all of us, the mom demands action, the ones that are here today and the ones that aren't, 
um, that you put this on the agenda so promptly. Um, you know, we know that in August, Governor Newsom approved AB 452, um, but we should not wait. You know, that I think goes into effect 2023, 2024 school year. And if we can inform parents and guardians now and save one life in our community or prevent one incident that can harm and traumatize our students and staff, it's worth it. So thank you for putting this on the agenda. Like Suzanne said, um, we'd like to partner with you um, the second part of the resolution. I was so glad to see that. We have some great campaigns, a Be Smart campaign um, that Suzanne mentioned, and we'd really like to continue our partnership with you. Um, it's a great organization as a part of every town as well. And they have some really wonderful resources to continue this very important work. So please vote yes, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Allen. Uh, before we move to uh, comments and questions from the uh, board members, did you, is there anything else? Oh, all right, then we're at comments and questions from the board. I'd like to move the item. I have a comment. A comment. Uh, let's let's get a second, and then we'll do it. Okay, sorry. Uh, as, second. Okay, <laughs> Ms. Creason. I'll be quick. Um, thank you. I want to first say thank you to the advocates that brought this to our attention in as nicely baked Rizzo, right? Um, it's wonderful that you've done so much work um, that's ready to go and you've done the research and you're taking the time, your time, which I know you have a whole life outside of this um, to make sure our kids are safe, your kids, um, our community is safe. So I appreciate that very, very much. A couple of thoughts on the Rezzo. I did notice that after this year, it says that we will then annually share in the family handbook. Um, the only concern I have, and I think that it's great that it will be in the handbook, but I hope that we could do more than just the handbook, just because I don't think everyone looks at the handbook um, or they might not get to that page. I know, shocker, right? I'm admitting, I admit nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering if we could explore um, or make, really make a commitment. I don't know if we could commit to the what, but commit to something other than just the handbook, I think is really important. So the uh, AB 452 does require that we put that notice in our annual notifications, which is indeed that family handbook. Mm -hmm. um, so it does have to be in there. But of course, we can always exceed what the law says. We just can't go less than that. Um, so I, I think really hearing the interest to go further and above and beyond and really raise the awareness and profile. I think we have some opportunities to partner with others. And really that campaign to really raise that awareness is something we can probably grab onto and really make sure that um, even though it's a notice there, it's not the only time of the year we can talk about it in our other communication channels. So I think we can make that commitment to partner with others and have those uh, broader communication pieces out there as well. That makes me feel a whole lot better. And, you know, just in the interest of transparency, I was going to ask for a signed form, like a letter that goes home and someone signed it. But after having some conversations and really thinking about it, I know that it's really challenging to get a form signed. You know, we have that challenge with other forms that, um, and we don't need a burden. We really, the goal is to uplift and raise awareness for safety. That's the goal. And I think that there's ways to do it without a signature, which may cause another burden, which is a whole other thing. Um, so I'm happy that that satisfies me. If we, if it's more than just the handbook and we could just continue to raise awareness. And I think I heard you say more than once a year. And I think that's great too, especially because we know that there's kids that come in the middle of the year or people forget, or, um, you know, sometimes kids change who they're living with, um, throughout the year. So that'll, just give us more opportunity to raise awareness maybe with more people if not just a reminder so i'm good with the rezzo thank you anyone else yes no okay vote. are we ready uh for a vote uh all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Those did, you get a, did you get a second i can't I uh, yes we did. Did. Okay. Yeah. all i still i this is still i <laughs> we did get all five. It, it was unanimous um Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we now move to item I3, uh, the tentative agreement with the Teamsters Union Local 150, Mr. Thickbin. Good evening, President McKibben, board member, Superintendent Kern, and Ms. Cunningham. I'm here tonight to present for discussion the tentative agreement between the Teamsters Local 150 in the San Juan Unified School District. Happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, any questions from the board? Uh, this is a discussion item. It will return on October the 25th. And I am happy to report on that one. I apologize uh, that that has been ratified by the Teamsters membership um, as of last Friday. Okay. 
Uh, we'll move now to I-4, uh, salary schedule adjustments, uh, SJAA and cabinet. And this too is a discussion item. Yes. Correct. Correct. This uh, is a presentation on uh, proposed salary schedule adjustments for our San Juan Administrators Association and cabinet. Happy to answer any questions. Questions from the board. Okay, thank you. And we'll move now to I-5. Uh, this is related to San Juan Professional Educators Coalition. Yes, tonight I'm this presenting- This is an action item. Correct. Tonight I am presenting the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the tentative agreement between SJ Peck and San Juan Unified. Are there any questions or, from the board? If not, an, uh, and move the motion is order. Move the item. Mr. Hernandez uh, uh, moves and- Second. Zima, say, I'm Ms. Creason, second. I could be Zima, I'm still Zima. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It is approved four to zero. All right, we move on to, am I at six? I six. Okay. I six. Uh, uh, San Juan Teachers Association. This too is an action item. That's correct. And uh, the superintendent's recommendation tonight is that the board approve this tentative agreement between SJTA and the school district for the 2022, 23, and 24 school years. Questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Costa moves and second by okay. Ms. Creason. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It is approved four to zero. We now move to uh, San Juan Supervisors Association uh, I-7. This too is an action item. Correct. Uh, tonight, I am presenting the superintendent's recommendation to approve this tentative agreement between our supervisors association and the school district. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, is there a motion? Second. Move that in. Second. Uh, Mr. Hernandez uh, uh, moves and Ms. Creason seconds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And it is four to zero one once again. Moving now to I-8, another action item, uh, California School Employees Association. Yes, this is our penultimate labor agreement for the evening. Uh, and the superintendent's recommendations that the board approve this tentative agreement with our CSEA uh, uh, chapter and the school district. Happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Questions? Is there a motion? Move the item. Ms. Costa moves and seconded by. Second. Ms. Creason. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It is four to zero again. Now we move to salary schedule adjustments. Uh, I-9, Mr. Thickman. Yes, this is a recommendation that the board approve uh, the proposed salary schedule adjustments that were discussed on October 11th for our confidential and unrepresented staff members happy to answer any questions you have okay this is an action item so moved second moved by miss costa seconded by mr hernandez all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed it is again four to zero mr thickman before you go i want to thank you very much for all the work that you've done over the last few months this has been yeoman service and and it is uh these contracts in far as i'm concerned are great concept concerts and thank you for the work of you and your team uh, at getting to this point and thank you for all the uh, bargaining units uh, this is an example of our transparency in this district and we really appreciate all of your work both yours and the bargaining units at coming to these agreements thank you president mckibben and thank you to everyone uh, in the room that's been a part of the negotiation process in partnership with the bargaining units including your superintendent and cabinet team thank you We move now to Mr. Orpalo and uh, variable term waivers. Good evening, President McGibbon, board member, Superintendent Kermis Cunningham, and uh, Dr. McKibben, I have the next three items. And so my first item is I'm here to present the superintendent's recommendation that the governing board approve the submission of 17 variable term waivers to the California Commission on Teaching Teacher Credentialing. 
And here tonight with me is Deanne Carlson, Director of Human Resources, and Lisa Ellington, the Human Resources Analyst, analyst to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, do you have any questions? You'll give me a second. Big old, big old one. I have had a couple if I can find them. <laughs> uh, it was a long. Um, I appreciated you dividing them up into the sections that you did, the career technical education sections, the special education section, and the other other things that was very helpful to me in terms. And, and I thought that this year's explanations were better than I'd ever seen before in terms of since it was a former life of mine uh, to, to see these and to and you explained them very well and I, I wanted to in true transparency I did not explain them Miss <laughs> Ellington did and she spent a lot of time on those um, and so I would just want to acknowledge her and the work that she did on that uh, Miss Carlson was mentoring her through this was her first time through this process this is and uh, she really uh, did an outstanding job so this, thank you this was impressive any other uh, uh, comments by uh, board members? Okay, okay. this is an action item. And is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Costa moves and seconded by? Second. Ms. Creason, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, it is four to zero. We we'll move now to item I-11, assignment of teachers outside of their regular base credential. Thank you, Dr. McKibben. This is a, the superintendent's recommendation that the board adopts resolution 4040, authorizing the assignment of 58 certificate employees to areas outside of authorized credential. And again, I'm here with my team to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any uh, questions from the board? Uh, Okay, I do have, have I, I do uh, notice some familiar names on this list from, from years past. Uh, I ha have one question. One of the things that I read in, in the thing is the expectation is there is some expectation that these folks are moving toward a regular authorization in, in the regulations and so forth. How do we check to see if there has been any movement toward further growth in these areas? Um, I can get back to you in a uh, in follow up on that, Dr. McBride. I don't have the answer to that right off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I know that we have in the past uh, communicated with the people who are affected, um, but I don't recall specifically for this year. Okay, all right. It was a question that as I was forming my question, I would have called you on this if it hadn't happened uh, late uh, as I was reading these sort of things, but I, but uh, that uh, indeed I know a lot of these people who are doing this and they're doing a great job, but uh, I did want to see if we were following some of the other things that are required uh, by uh, regulation and I kind of know who wrote those regulations. I would add that a lot of these are at the recommendation of the site principal or the people okay. that, that, that they're being that they're in a um, that they're affecting the site in a positive manner. Okay, but uh, I think something we need to be paying attention to rather than because it is a, frequently a usual suspects kind of thing, thing on this list. Okay, uh, let's see, where am I? Have we done? I-11. We are. We need a motion. We, are, we need a motion on? I-11. I-11. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It is again four to zero on Isla. And finally, Dr. McKibben, I'm here to present the superintendent's recommendation that the governing board approve the submission of four provisional internship permits to the California Commission on Teaching Credentialing. And again, I have my team to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions on I-11? Let me see. No, I-12. I-12, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Looking for my own. It appears that our... Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Right. Moved by Ms. Creason. 
Second. Second by Ms. Costa. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. And it is again four to, not, four to zero uh, approval. Dr. McKim, I just would like to um, say to uh, uh, Ms. Carlson and Ms. Ellington, just an outstanding job this year. We had quite a few more because of where we're at with the, 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 the supply of teachers across uh, not only Sacramento, but across the United States. And so a lot of work went into that this year. And so I just wanted to thank them uh, for the work that they had done. Yeah, again, I, I know indeed how much time this takes to, to get this done and to do all of the, 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 the searching and researching and, and talking to the folks and getting it from the principals and, and so forth. So I appreciate the, the number of hours that you worked on this. Uh, let it be reflected that the, the speed that it took us to approve these uh, does not reflect the enormous amount of work that you put in to get us to this point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We move now to I-13. Uh, Mr. Camarda will be uh, providing an action item related to Earl Legat Elementary School. <clears throat> yes, thank you, uh, President McKibben, members of the board, Superintendent Kern, Ms. Cunningham. Uh, tonight's facilities item is an action item. It is a uh, the intent to convey a permanent utility easement uh, in relation to the construction, uh, new construction and modernization of uh, Earl Legat uh, Elementary School. Uh, the superintendent is recommending that the board adopt resolution number 4042, uh, declaring the intent to convey a permanent easement at Leggett Elementary School to the Sacramento Municipal Utility District and to call a public hearing uh, to be held on November 15th, uh, 2022. And I'm here to answer any questions that the board may have. Are there questions? Is there a motion to adopt uh, resolution 4042 and convey a permanent easement to Earl Leggett and call a public hearing on November 15th? So moved by Ms. Creason, seconded by Second. Mr. Hernandez. <laughs> all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous, four to zero. Thank you. We move to item I-14 uh, related to the governance handbook, Mr. Allen. Good evening once again, President McKibben, members of the board, Superintendent Kern and Mrs. Cunningham. Tonight, we are back to pro present our proposed revisions to the board's governance handbook. This is based on our conversations from our workshop back in April, as well as the conversations we had around our committees. Uh, the proposed changes would update the references to our guiding documents in the districts, such as our strategic framework and our equity lens, as well as references to demographics in the district. It also aligns our language with changes to the language that will be proposed in your next item on board bylaws. And finally, it adds language regarding trustee areas and representation. This is a discussion item. We'd be happy to hear your comments and suggestions, and this item will return at your next meeting, along with any needed changes for your final approval. Any questions or comments? I really like the revisions to the policies, and I think that it makes it much clearer. It will be useful for our new board members who are joining us. And it also reflects the changes from a five member board to a seven member board. So I appreciated all of that. And I'm looking forward to having the final copy. Okay. All right. This is a discussion item. It will return to us on the 25th of October. Would you like this as a, uh, action item on the agenda or would you like this back on consent? Consent. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Item I-15, board bylaw revisions. Good evening. We're saving the best for last, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good evening, uh, President McKibben, board members, Superintendent Kern and Ms. Cunningham. Uh, before you are um, several board bylaws, two are new ones that we're proposing be accepted by the board, and several have been revised. Um, as you probably saw, a number of them are at least 15 to 20 years uh, old, so they really did need to be updated. These are based on um, local current laws and CSBA um, recommendations, so I am here to answer any questions that you might have about any of these particular bylaws. Any questions? Uh, Ms. Costa. 
The only question I have is how will these be supplied to the new board members? Because we're, we had the opportunity to read all of them in the packet. And I don't know that the new members would have seen them at this point in time. So a suggestion I would have is that um, I think at the last two elections, we've actually put together a packet of communications um, from um, board communications to cabinet minutes to meeting minutes from our committees. We could add these changes in there. Um, Ms. Cunningham has that binder that she is putting together. And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll add those into that. So that's a good suggestion. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And if the board actually, I wouldn't mind having a copy when they're approved. <laughs> and I was going to say, and when, and if the board were to take action uh, at the next board meeting, then they would be able to be cleaned up and be ready in time for um, the, when the binder goes out to the new board members. I have to show you that I read these. <laughs> Will you look at page 96, please? Number five on that page. 96, I show is everything being, oh, excuse me. 96, number five, yes. And in there, it talks about each item uh, it was for public input being 20 minutes. But when I read today uh, related to the public input, we talked about 30 minutes. Is there a reason why there was a discrepancy between what I read in this agenda item and what we have in this bylaw? No, and that is actually a great um, catch because um, I believe our board bylaw does allow 30 minutes for a full number of items. So I will make that change to okay. have it correspond. Well, when I, when I looked at that, my thought was we have 30 because we have 30 now. The question is, do we want to change it to 20? And I thought if it was changed to this, then that would change there. Mm. Boards. So, I mean, this, this is based on CSBA recommendations, correct? That's correct. So that was my thought. It's, it says 30 because that's current. If you guys were to take action and support it as is here, then it would move to 20. What's the pleasure of the board? Ms. Greeson. I'd like to keep it at 30. Mr. Hernandez. I actually like to go to 20. <laughs> I would too. I, because we have, we have the ability then to increase it, which we have taken we a vote do that. to do, but to have that as the standing, I mean, we increase it when it's 30. Yes, we do. So, we, we haven't limited comment to that. I, I think that the one piece would be, it would align with CSBA, but it, it, it does not hinder the board in any way, shape or form or of extending it, which, you know, was kind of new through the pandemic, but, uh, you know, I think that's something that we would continue to do going forward. I would hope, yeah, but again, it's up to the will of the board. Let me just tell you why I think 20 is because um, we don't really know how the, 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 night, the dynamic, dynamics is going to change with seven board members and time management in, in my mind is going to be something that we need to pay attention to for future board meetings. So that's just what the reason why I'm thinking 20 is better. Ms. Creason, would you like to? I mean, my thought is I don't ever want to take away time from the community. It's 10 minutes. So, I mean, I still stand by 30, 30 minutes because I don't think, I just don't feel that it's that much time and Shifting the time from community to a bunch of electeds, eh, we're not that fun. But <laughs> I don't know. They just, I know that, let me be serious. I just don't, I don't, I don't want to take the time away from community. And I, I, I get it. And I hear that, you know, we can't extend it, but we don't have to extend it. And it's not, if it were an hour, I would say, but it's 10 minutes. I just don't, I don't think it's a great look. But of course, you know, whatever the, but the majority says. 
10 minutes. Yeah, so 10 minutes, leave it. I'm saying it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes Cut shorter. Yeah, and it's taken away. I don't want to take anything away. I We're think that's taking, my bottom line. I don't think it's taking away, but I think it is is setting a, a limit and then saying, yes, if it's an important issue, we will extend it as a board. Yeah, we, we still have that option to extend as long as we want. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Simlick, what are our options here? Uh, can we do um, this now or by a, a vote or? No, well, it, this is a discussion matter. Based on what I'm hearing, there is at least a majority of the board here now who is saying to keep it. It'll come forward with the, with the number of 20, but you can talk about it again. You could pull, If you're going to put it on consent, you can pull it from consent and have a discussion particularly about this one item. Uh, at the next board meeting. And this will come back to us on the 25th of October. That's correct. Okay, is that all right? And, uh, but we have, I think, the sense of the, of the board. Uh, I mean, Can I get clarity, Ms. Simla, because you said a majority, I don't know that Dr. McKibben made clear your preference on this, because, you know. The truth is I would have kept it at 30. <laughs> the plot thickens. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to tell you that. Yeah, you okay, then thank you. <laughs> so I like it. Yeah, it coming back. It's coming. It's a mm -hmm. discussion item. It's going to come back. Yeah, it'll come back. Yes, please. Can I suggest not going on consent though? Because they're not. There's no consensus. Yeah. yeah. Can we yeah. come fine. back as an action item, please? Yes, absolutely. That'd be great. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And would we'll would you like? Also, uh, yeah, I, I would make one suggestion. You could put all of them except this one on consent, yeah. the rest of them, mm -hmm. and then it would just be that. And then, you know, all of a sudden we don't get tripped up by something else. That's so a good idea. that's absolutely fine. If there are no other questions about any of the other board bylaws, we I will do that. I, I don't think so. We're about to start doing this. I, I have one more turn corner. Uh, that, that was the reason why I was a turn corner is I had no idea that we could do uh, that. We did joint powers agreements was one of the things that was in, in there. Is that is that always been in there? And I just didn't notice. And I'm not quite uh, sure which joint board. powers uh, agency issues. The board may meet in closed session. What what page? Page, page seventy four. I'm sorry. Okay, so that is one of the exceptions for a closed session. Yes, you may meet in closed session on that. Okay. And as I was reading, that, I didn't remember that at all. So that was why I had the page turned. It was was not at all controversial. It's just <laughs> my learning spurt. Okay, this will return to the board uh, on October twenty fifth, uh, and. Uh, and we will have, uh, most of it will be on consent, but this uh, one item related to uh, the amount of time for visitor comment will, will be a dis uh, an item for discussion and then action. And for clarification, that'll be board bylaw 9323. We'll come back for action. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving on to, uh, I believe the next item is also yours, Williams complaints, yes, uh, thank you. I-16. Yes, thank you, and good evening again, President McKibben, board members, Superintendent Kern, and Ms. Cunningham. Education Code Section 35186 requires that district staff report to the board at a regularly scheduled board meeting concerning any William-type complaints and the resolution of those complaints that have been filed with the district. For the quarter from July through September 2022, there were no Williams complaints filed with the district. Thank you. And this is a report, and we move on now to, that's the end of our business items. We move now to board reports. Anyone would like to talk about? Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Costa. I just want to recognize all the hard work that went into the San Juan Education Foundation dinner and fundraising event. It was Really good to be back in person. And again, our congratulations to Superintendent Kern for being honored and becoming an alumni of our stars of San Juan. It was really a great evening. And they're still fundraising. So if anybody knows anybody who wants to donate, they will take your money very happily. 
any others? I had had one uh, on Tuesday. Uh, I was uh, at Greer uh, Elementary for the uh, uh, ribbon cutting of the face mobile, and it is if you haven't seen it, it is truly a spectacular uh, uh, th thing. And the the list of things that they offer there was uh, absolutely uh, really very impressive. And and thanks to all of our partners, I understand there are many and i don't have a list of them that helped to get this thing launched as well as the face department and others that that uh, came together to provide this kind of service that truly shows us going into the communities and, and serving them in ways that uh, i have seldom seen by a school district and it's very very impressive and i want to thank everybody that uh, had a, a role in that it is very impressive with that we move to a uh, future agenda items are there any board members that wish to add any items to the future agenda we do not have any closed session uh, items to re, uh, return to so we are adjourned at 8 20.